Shields up, Iron Breakers. Rook on here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Monster Hunter. And today we're going to be talking about consumables such as potions, mega potions, max potions, hot drinks, cold drinks, rations, anything that you can think of that is a consumable in the game. And also gathering materials such as uh, iron orb, you know, any ore that you can really gather using a, a pickaxe or bugs that you go out and collect or even like, you know, the fish that you have to fish out in order to achieve uh, different things. Sometimes it might be to craft an armor set, other times it might be to craft a weapon, other times it might be just to craft some tools that you actually take out into the field, such as traps or pretty much anything that you can think of. And the reasoning why I'm going to be bringing up this topic is indeed the previous video that I did, and I know that not everyone is pleased with the fact that I did that particular video, so I'm not going to extend too much into talking about the talking points of that video. But yes, it is the video where I talk about cheating in Monster Hunter Rise or any other game, because my opinion, my thoughts on cheating is pretty much the same for any game. And I'm not trying to like grandstand or guilt people into, you know, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. It's like, listen, I feel like I've expressed what I wanted to say in regards to that topic in that video, so feel free to watch that if you are curious. But one of the things that I have noticed in the comment section of that video was that for a lot of people, it felt like they didn't really see the gathering portion of Monster Hunter as a core part of the game. And this kind of like stirred up a lot of thoughts in me where I was thinking about, huh, it's like, to me, the, the gathering part of Monster Hunter is so tightly woven into the gameplay of the game itself that I just can't see myself uh, almost playing the game the same way if the gathering wasn't there. It just feels like it would be a completely different experience. And due to that, I recently made a poll, and this was a little bit of an extreme poll because I wanted to only get, like, a yes or no answer. Because a lot of you guys pointed out, Rurikhan, you could have made this poll, you know, you could have added a couple of more options in the middle, but to me, this is, this is kind of like a, a radical thing, which is like, look, you can either see this gathering aspect as a core part of the game or you can see it as a needless chore and at least i was uh, somewhat relieved to see that 90 percent of the people who voted on this out of like 14,000 votes as of the recording of this video actually agree that gathering things and uh, you know crafting consumables and stuff like that that this is actually a core part of the game and this is not something that you would like to see removed and only 10% of people uh, actually see this as a needless chore. And this might be surprising to uh, some Monster Hunter veterans, right? You guys come in and you're like, huh, interesting that so many, that there's, you know, still a significant amount of people that look at this as a needless chore. But I think that just puts into perspective just the amount of people that we now have that are completely new to the franchise. And I'm not trying to alienate anyone. Anyone who has seen my videos, you know that I'm all about bringing people into the franchises that I like to play and trying to kind of like, you know, teach them the ins and outs of how to play a certain play style or whatever and different things that they can do to have the most fun possible with these games. That's always the approach that I come from. And with the Monster Hunter franchise, I just feel like for a, a not insignificant amount of people, because there's also obviously a, a certain amount of bias in, in these polls, and that bias is going to be that, you know, most of the people that regularly watch my content tend to be people that agree with me. Now, an, an interesting side note here is that I actually tend to watch a lot of content from people that I don't agree with, because I find that interesting to actually check out and see what they're talking about and to see if they can kind of like change my mind on certain stances of things that I have but that's that's like a completely whole different thing I just like seeing challenging opinions because it makes for interesting discourse or even just like it causes me to question things that I think are right or wrong but anyways you know this is obviously I think that by noting that thing that I just mentioned about, you know, watching different content and engaging with people that have different opinions, you can kind of get why I'm making this video. Even though there's, you know, it's a minority of people that feel like this, I feel compelled to engage in this argument to try and explain why it is that something like this is a core part of the experience to me. And, and quite simply, a great deal of it is immersion. It's just like one of the things that I value a lot in video games is the ability of me to be able to suspend this belief that like, hey, this is actually a virtual world. I like 
when games get you immersed to a point where you're just like, it almost feels like you're there, right? That's the whole definition of immersion. And I kind of feel that the consumables in Monster Hunter World feel, make the world feel much more alive. Now, in the past, I've advocated for us not being able to refill our consumables whenever we go into a hunt. And a lot of people think that this is just like a, a difficulty thing or whatever. And in a way it is, uh, you know, because obviously it's, it's more challenging when you go in and you can't just like go back to camp and refill your inventory or even swap weapons and completely change strategies. It's more uh, challenging to go in there and just engage with the monster on the you know, on the quest parameters that they give you and try to figure out what's going to be the best loadout and fully prepare for that particular engagement with that monster with whatever loadout you happen to prepare for it and just like trying to figure out what's the best way for me to go in there and like the way that can increase my chances of success against this monster. But that's not all. And, and I've, I've tried to tell this to people, but I guess that not everybody resonates with the same things. Obviously, I mean, that's a given because there's such a wide variety of gamers nowadays that different things are going to appeal to different people. And I would, I would ask people not to be too antagonistic if someone expresses like a difference of opinion from you. It, it's just whatever, right? But it's just like, I would just like to at least get my point across for people that is like, no, I think that consumables are a chore and I want to be able to refill my consumables uh, from the from the camp because it makes things easier and more accessible and all of that. But it's like, let me just tell you like this, right? So back in the day before I actually knew how to properly play Monster Hunter, because obviously none of us came into Monster Hunter fully taught. It's not like, oh yeah, I know exactly what I got to do. I got to go get the uh, the green herbs and I got to go get the blue mushrooms and combine those to make a potion. Then I go got to get the honey so that I combine that and make a, make a mega potion, right? The game teaches you that over time and you, you become aware of what are valuable resources in order for you to do your crafting and your, you know, and your consumables and all of this stuff. But before that, right, before you knew how to do all of those things, a lot of the hunts that I found particularly enjoyable are the ones where I load in and I have my resources and then I realize, oh my god, uh, like this monster's not dead yet and I've gone through all of my potions. Holy crap, I'm kind of screwed here. And, you know, you couldn't just go back to camp and refresh. Like, there, are, there would be some quests in old school Monster Hunter where they would give you the option to like, oh, you've... Uh, uh, you've you've done this particular subquest, like say on certain monsters, maybe you broke a specific part, like you broke the monster's head. You've completed this subquest. We're going to give you additional resources that you can go to the camp and pick up. So there there was kind of like a refill mechanic, and even if you think about Generations Ultimate, there's even like the the drop in things that would drop into the map. Like you can actually order like air supplies into the map. For those of you that never played Generations Ultimate, that was a mechanic. So like you could request specific items to be delivered into the quest, and I thought that that was interesting. More interesting than just refilling your inventory that's not nearly as interesting to me but anyway you know I would be doing a quest and I'd realize oh my god I've I've actually spent all of my potions and now I'm kind of screwed because you know I don't have the materials to deal with this monster and that is like that's the reason why a lot of quests have a 50 minute time limit it's so that you can actually like, oh wait, because this is Monster Hunter, I can actually just disengage. It's not like I'm locked into this arena with a monster. I mean, in certain quests, obviously you are, but like when you're out into the map on your traditional Monster Hunter quest, it's like, I can just disengage. I can try to get away from this monster and go run through the map and try to find resources and try to like scavenge for things in order to, you know, recreate a little bit of my stock. So you could actually just, you know, there were several quests, like when I didn't know how to play the game properly, where I would run out of consumables and I would run out there and I was like, okay, uh, I know that there's herb in this zone, so I'm going to go to this zone, collect some herb, going to go to this zone, collect some mushrooms, and then going to go to this zone and collect some honey. And I understand that for a lot of people, this is a this is a concept that seems very, uh, you know, it doesn't seem appealing. It's like, what, what do you mean? I just want to fight the monster. Why would I want to go and, and gather resources? But I kind of feel that for a lot of hunters, this was such a meaningful experience because it's way more immersive because it's like, oh, I underestimated my enemy. I need to retreat because uh, that whole thing 
makes uh, is a part of the the simulation aspect. It's not really like a full on simulation, obviously, but it's like there are simulation elements to, to Monster Hunter. If you really think about it, like why do you think you need to sharpen your weapon? You need to sharpen your weapon because that is considered a, a core mechanic because like, oh, you hit the monster a certain amount of times with your weapon and now your weapon has become dull because, you know, certain monsters, you, you hit it in the hide. It's like, you know, grab a katana and slash it at a wall. See how long that katana is going to last, right? So like that's the purpose of sharpening. It's to simulate the fact that your weapon gets wear and tear and you have to like stop and actually sharpen your weapon to restore its functionality so that you're able to slash against monsters again. You know, that's one element of the simulation. Then you look at another one. It's like, oh, you're in a you're in this particular area for a certain amount of time and now your stamina drains, right? Your stamina drains, that's again a simulation mechanic. Like your your hunter is tired and therefore you are required to actually eat food in order to continue, you know, this hunt in, with the appropriate settings. Or, that's the beauty of the simulation aspect of it, you can take a chance and not do that. You can take a chance and be like, I'm just gonna, you know, go at it with less stamina. There's a choice that you can do there. It's the same thing with the sharpness. You don't have to sharpen your weapon unless it's like in the red. At that point, you have to sharpen it, otherwise it's just gonna bounce. But depending on the monster, you can just choose, oh, maybe I'll attack this area of the monster that has less armor, and even though my weapon is not as sharp, I can still, like, get by and deal some damage, and maybe the monster will switch areas and whatnot. And all of these things basically combine together to form what I would consider to be the unique experience that is Monster Hunter. It's like... Old school monster hunters have never been boss rushes. Even the new ones, they're not boss rushes, but there definitely appears to be a trend, particularly with Monster Hunter Rise, of them going more towards, you know, boss rush mode. And I've I even had this this comment, which, you know, I'm I'm not offended by this or anything like that. Like a lot of times I'll talk about comments that I read and people are like, oh, I can't believe someone would say that. But it's like um, where this person basically said, look, Rurikan, Capcom is clearly moving on from these outdated systems. Why don't you move on? And it's, it, you know, it, it makes you wonder. It's like, is, is that the way of things? Is Capcom moving away from, you know, what a lot of us, particularly the ones who've played the older version of, Mo of Monster Hunter, are they actually moving away from the, the core aspects of what, you know, what a lot of us consider to be the core of the game, and they're moving it more towards the territory of, you know, a boss battler or something like that, right? And that that's definitely, you know, something to, to put into question, to, to wonder, is that the case? Are they going to be do that? Is that even their intention, or are they just thinking in terms of quality of life? The problem is when you go too far with quality of life, you might end up alienating a portion of your audience that actually enjoyed things the way that they were. And I want to make sure that people understand when I'm talking about uh, certain things, I'm not talking about like, say, for instance, uh, I think it was in Generations that they changed. I'm not sure if it was Generations or for Ultimate, where you no longer had to mash the button to carve monster. The, the way that it would, it was either for your generations. You basically could stand on top of the monster after the, the ending of the fight, and you could just hold the button, and it would carve like three or four times, or however many times you'd be able to carve. Like, that's a good thing. So that you're not getting carpal tunnel from mashing the button, right? That's a good thing. In Monster Hunter World, it was the same thing. Like, you could go up to a mining node or something, and just like, hold the button down, and you know, just get the thing out. Now, in Rise, they went as far as to like, oh, go to a mining node and you tap it once and boom, you get literally everything from that mining node to really speed up the process. That, I'm a little bit more conflicted in. Like, I'm not sure I like it that way. Like, I like the fact that you only have to hold the button once, but I still feel like you mining should be an action that you kind of have to commit to. Because it's not, at least to me personally, and you can get, you guys can let me know if you disagree, just, you know, try not to get on each other's throats over this, because at the end of the day, I just want people to, to have a dialogue and to figure out where the community wants to go from here. If, we, if, we, if the intention is to go a little bit further back, or if the intention is to dial it up all the way forward, and I'm not going to say that there's a, a wrong opinion here. What I'm going to say is there is one thing that I like, and there is one thing that I would like less, which is if they keep dialing it up to the point where it becomes a boss rush, I can tell you right now that it's going to be a lot less interesting to me. 
but that does not mean that it is an invalid thing and it does not mean that i'm not going to check it out still or play it or whatever it just means that to me it was much more interesting to you know actually have some deliberate actions and particularly the the mining thing you know i get it that for a lot of people it's like oh mining is is just a chore just something that i do because i have to do but to me it's not like, I do it because I find it interesting that, you know, you're actually immersed in, in this world. And it's like, yeah, I'm, while I'm hunting this monster, I found this node. And I'm going to take the time to mine this node because this is going to give me materials that I can later use back at, you know, the at the village in order to forge better armor or better weapons. And all of these things just kind of contribute to more and more immersion. And it kind of slows the pace of the game, which is a good thing. In my opinion, because because Monster Hunter has always been a more slower paced game for me, which is why, you know, even though I obviously I love Rise, as you guys know, because I mean, 700 hours now coming up on like over 100 hours on PC or something like that. And, you know, when Sunbreak comes out, I'm going to play the living crap out of it. You can bet you and whatever happens to be Monster Hunter 6 going to play living crap out of that, too. But the point is. Um, there's a lot of things in here that I feel like contribute to immersion and to a certain gameplay loop. And I see a lot of those things going away. And I just want people to understand that not everyone looks at these things as a complete needless chore. Like not everybody looks at, oh, I have to craft mega potions as something that's like, oh, I have to not go fight bosses now and I have to go craft mega potions. It's more like, oh, I should go out and I should prepare some additional resources for my hunts. And this is also valid for something like the hot and cold drinks, which they've actually removed from the game in Monster Hunter Rise. There's no hot and cold drinks. And for a lot of people, they look at it and it's like, well, it's just something, it's just maintenance, right? It's just something that you have to do if you go into the, if you go into the frost area of the map or if you go into the volcano area of the map, you have to like, oh, got to take the cold drinks and the hot drinks. Sometimes you'd forget and you have to go back to the village to, to get your hot drinks and cold drinks or go out into the map and try to find the materials to to craft these things while you're in the map itself so that you can proceed without necessarily having to go back to the village but these are important things that most definitely contribute to immersion and i know that not everybody is going to agree with this I, i'm well aware of the fact i've seen the the debates from people but now I'm going to post to you, and this is the part where people say, okay, now you're just exaggerating. But at the end of the day, like, this is literally what it is. At least in, in my opinion, this is what it is. And that is, it's like, okay, so you take hot and cold drinks away, which was, like you've stated, and correctly, it is a maintenance item, and removing them can be considered quality of life. Why don't we take rations away as well? And the hunter just always has max stamina and never gets tired. It's a small step. I mean, if you think about it, it's a very small step going from hot and cold drinks to just removing rations. And if you if you go through rations, then you can also argue, okay, why not just remove sharpness? You know, or whatever whatever the sharpness the weapon comes with, that's the sharpness that the weapon has. You guys are going to be like, well, but sharpness is a core mechanic. Different weapons have different sharpness and their skills associated with sharpness. This was one that I've seen in like previous comments and other videos. You know, there's skills associated with sharpness that make sense. There used to be skills associated with, you know, the conditions of the map. Skills that would negate things like uh, co the need for a cold drink or a hot drink. As a matter of fact, in Generations Ultimate, if I'm not mistaken, there's even a skill that takes advantage of it. So, like, if you would go into... I, I, I remember Watanagashi was talking about this because he had a set that had this skill. But if you would go into the volcano, which is a hot area, and then on top of it, you would drink a hot drink. So you wouldn't drink a cold drink to deny the effect of the fire. You would go in there with the skill, and then you would drink a hot drink on top of it, and you would actually gain benefits from it. So it's like, there are also skills for the conditions of the map. There are also skills that, you know, negate hunger. There's the there's hunger resistance or whatever it's called in Monster Under Rise, which obviously are skills that not a lot of people exist, but the simple fact that there are skills in your armor set that tell you, like, oh, this skill affects sharpness in different ways. That doesn't make sharpness a core mechanic according to the standards that we're setting here. 
because there have also been skills that affect the conditions of the map, the, you know, that deny the need for hot and cold potions. There's also skills that deny the need for you to eat food. There's, you know, there, there's there have been skills for everything almost in this game, I would imagine. And when you think about it like that, why not just remove rations and sharpening your weapon and all of these other things? I mean, we've already removed the need to track the monster. How about that? Like, back in the old games, you used to have to actually paintball the monster. In World, you know, you study it and you do the, the research thing and whatnot, and then eventually all you have to do is do, pick up one track from the monster and it's pretty much tagged for good. But... There was a magical thing about losing track of the monster and it, it, you know, there was again a sense of immersion because like, hey, the monster got away, you lost track of it, you had this paintball thing, you did not renew it, and you could wave at the, the balloon guy. I, I don't know if, you know, new players that came in from World, and I'm not, you know, singling you guys out, I'm just saying that you guys probably are not aware of the fact that back in the day there was like this balloon that was designed to, if I remember the lore justification for the balloon guys, they, they were just like high in the sky on these balloons. And the justification was that they were trying to spot elder dragon migration patterns and whatnot to warn people if, if elder dragons were crossing into specific territories. And you would be able to wave at these uh, balloon dudes and they would tell you where the monster is in your quest like they'd give you the location of the monster for the quest that you're at for a couple of seconds and then it's your job to get there as fast as possible to paintball them it doesn't guarantee that the monster's going to be there by the time you get there because the monster could be in a completely different portion of the map and it was there when the balloon guy signaled you but it could have moved and i realized that for a lot of people it's like oh man but track this seems like a complete pain yeah but there you know, there's items around it, there were potions that you could drink, like Psycho Serum, and you'd be able to detect where the monster was. Or in the case of Generations Ultimate, you could have a Prowler uh, combined, the Prowler would know where the monster was. And uh, there, there's like all of these ways of circumventing these mechanics in, in interest in, with different interesting play styles that are basically gone. This is just gone. And at the end of the day, you know, when you think about the essence of a cooperative game, is it not to actually cooperate with other people? So it's like, hey, tell you what, can you bring the skill that detects the monster and in exchange I'll bring more DPS skills so that I can deal more damage? And you could, you know, organize yourselves to be more effective that way. And, you know, not just that, but like one of the stories that I always tell, and I'm sorry if you've heard this before, but I just like bring it up because... You know, these are moments that I remember fondly from playing Monster Hunter. Like, for instance, when I played 3 Ultimate with Hengist. And um, if you guys go and you watch the Mighty, some of the old Mighty Monster Hunter videos, you'll notice that, like, I would carry uh, 50 power coatings. And I would also bring, like, materials and stuff that I would then hand to Hengist so that he could craft these things while out on the field. So you would actually do things like that to help out your teammates. And that, to me, is like the essence of a cooperative game. It's not like, okay, let's get together and bash this thing into oblivion, and it can't even move while we're bashing it. But that's kind of like the way that we're moving. The more quality of life you keep adding into it, eventually you're going to be left with a monster hunter that is a boss rush. And maybe that's even a better game that, than what I'm thinking about. But what I can tell you is that it is most definitely a different game than what you know, what actually brought me in, what got me to fell in love with Monster Hunter. All of these quirky things were things that I personally really appreciate, like the crafting of, of my own potions, the crafting of my consumables, and sometimes going out and just gathering. It's, it's, it's actually a relaxing thing because you can get burned out just fighting monster after monster after monster. Like, having a couple of gathering runs here and there really helps to set the pace. Like like I've said, I even wish they would bring back the, the traditional farm from Freedom Unite, which I thought was really good. And, and I think 3 Ultimate also had a farm, but you'd basically go in there and be like, okay, in, in this place of the farm, I'm going to, you know, plant my, my green potion, my, my green herbs. In this, it's like the blue mushrooms. In here, it's like the honey, so that I would have the three key components to craft the mega potion. Or maybe I want to get, like, some... Uh, some armor, what's it, what's it called? I forget the, the name of the, you guys know the, the, the might, the might stuff and the armor stuff, you know, get some of those things and yeah, it's the, the might berry and the, the armor berry and all, all of this. 
but just being able to do all of those things in between hunts uh is something that I personally appreciate, and, and, and particularly the gathering of it is something that I pre I've done many a, a gathering runs in a volcano when my friend uh, that got me into Monster Hunter actually taught me about, oh, but volcano is where you go to get, like, the best materials, and there's the, the highest chance to get, like, the materials that you're actually looking for to craft the really high-level stuff and whatnot. There's um, a magical aspect to all of this, and if eventually Monster Hunter just becomes a boss rush, is that actually something that we want? Do we want things to keep going faster and further towards that the, the dynamics essentially of Devil May Cry? Is, is this what we aspire to? And I'm curious to hear from you guys if this is what you want. Do you want the Devil May Cry, or do you want the, the more, you know, the more, the more paced, slower paced Monster Hunter experience where you can actually take the time to smell the roses and establish your uh, consumables and craft your things and whatnot. Anyway, let me know in the comment sections um, how you feel about that. That's just something that I'm curious about. Thank you all very much for watching this video. If you've watched it all the way, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you did not enjoy it, you can hit the dislike button. I wish I could show you guys the likes and dislikes. I kind of feel like... Anyway, I, I don't need to talk about that because YouTube is YouTube and Mama Susan's not going to like it if I talk about that. Uh, leave me a comment and if you guys enjoy the content feel free to subscribe hit the bell notification icon and all that jazz and I'll see you guys in the next one stay strong stay safe peace out